For those of you that have watched my channel for over a year now, you'll know that I like the Volvo XC90, especially the P2 Volvo XC90. I even owned a 2010 XC90 V8. And one of my nerdy bucket list items is to drive every version of the P2 XC90. So let's take a look at Volvo's five cylinder turbo SUV and compare my V8 to the 2.5T. So like I said, we got this as a trade-in. It's going to be wholesale. And if you don't know what wholesale is really quickly, it's going to an auction to be sold to probably a buy here, pay here dealership. But this is a 2005 XC90 2.5T in ruby red metallic. It's a pretty sharp looking color. I owned one in ember black. An XC90 in this shape is something that you'll probably commonly see around anywhere near you. Not taken care of. These things are beat to the ground. This one has 200,000 miles. But in terms of spec, this has most of the features that you'll find on most other 05 XC90s. Also really quickly, I wanted to mention the wheels. Volvo names their wheels. They're, I don't I think any other brand does this. These are called the Neptunes. They're 17 inch alloys. You'll see them on most XC90 that you'll see on the road, especially this is a pre-refresh model. So you'll see them on V8s, 3.2s, 2.5Ts, and some T6s as well. I could nerd out about the wheels, but these are the Neptunes. So P2 XC90s were available with several different engines throughout the years, but 2005 was when things started to get a little bit messy just for 2005. So of course, the 2.5T was the base engine, but you could get a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged straight six, also known as the T6, paired to a garbage GM transmission. Do not walk, run away from that if you're looking at a, a T6 XC90 because the transmissions in those are terrible. That engine made 268 horsepower. It was a good engine, but do not get it because of the transmission. Thankfully, Volvo replaced that engine with a 4.4 liter Yamaha V8, also known as the B8444S. I remember the engine code. Good job, Burn. But it was a 4.4 liter V8. It made about 311 horsepower. It was a much better engine, just smoother, more reliable. Well, reliability could be subjective, but I had one and it was a pretty good engine. But then we have this. This was the base engine for the XC90 since 2003. Well, from 03 to 07. This is a 2.5 liter turbocharged five cylinder engine. This is exactly the same motor that you'll find in the S60, V70, XC70, S80, every P2 Volvo that used the 2.5T. So since they used it in every Volvo, it's proven, it's pretty reliable. These use timing belts. This engine makes 208 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. Interestingly enough, and kind of ridiculously, doesn't matter what size Volvo you get with this engine, it makes the same amount of power. So a big, nearly 5,000 pound SUV makes 208 horsepower. We'll see how lethargic it is. Some people say it's not bad, but we'll just figure that out once we drive it. So the 2.5T was paired to a five-speed automatic transmission, also known as the AW55. It's a pretty good transmission. It was just like the engine used in every Volvo of this era. You could pair it with either front wheel drive or Haldex all wheel drive. And I'm gonna nerd out, so let's put our glasses back on. This one uses Haldex generation two, which is a more reactive all wheel drive system. So it's primarily front wheel drive, but until the front wheels slip and they use quite a bit of slip, it'll send power to the rear using hydraulic pumps. Now Haldex Generation 3, which was introduced in the 2005 V8, is a more proactive system, so it requires less wheel spin in the front to send power to the rear. So one of my favorite parts of these P2 XC90s is the trunk, well, the tailgate. 
This uses a split tailgate. The XC90 hasn't used this since 2015. It's nice because you could sit on it, you could use it as a workbench. I loved it when I had my XC90. But behind the third row, now first, every XC90 has a third row. But behind the third row, you get 21.6 cubic feet of volume. And then if you fold the second and third row down, you get 92 cubic feet of volume, which is van-like. It's really big back here. It's very spacious. But aside from that, there's a few things that I wanted to mention about the trunks of these. First, there's this little flap which came really in handy because most of the time I'd keep the third row down in mine. You could put things up here and it just stops things from sliding around because it's that was loud but it's just a little nook so things don't fly all over the place and there's hooks for bags as well. These do have a spare tire. It's not a full-size spare tire, it's a donut, and it's underneath your XC90. In terms of towing, I actually almost forgot. You could tow up to 5,000 pounds with the 2.5T. I wouldn't necessarily do it, but Volvo says you can. Now, before we depart, let's listen to a nice sequence of noises because I always love the sounds of Volvos. Nice. The thing's rattling inside. Something else about these P2s, they smell really nice. The leather has a smell. I mean, at least I think the smell is nice. I've always thought the smell is nice. We're gonna get on this straight road and see what the 2.5T does. That's floored. That's slow. That's slow. Wow. The throttle responds nicely when you're driving slow. I mean, this is a big SUV and we'll get into the corners a little bit later, but I mean, driving it normally, like how most people would drive an XC90, it drives well. Let's see how it does now. Yeah, it's not that fast. It's not fast, it's slow. It's slow, like, it's slow to build revs too. But, I mean, think about it. This is like 4,600 pounds. It's kind of justified why it doesn't accelerate that quickly because it makes it only 208 horsepower. So they really did not put enough power in this. I really wonder if you could hear how the dash is just creaking. I'm not even going on any bumps right now. That's reassuring. Ooh. Yeah, it's not that reassuring. And there's a gar garbage truck that has just cut me off. I need to, th well, there's one more straight road that I want to get onto. Let's see this bump. It takes bumps well. I mean, XC90s drive like trucks, kind of. But mine, the one I had, the steering was lighter. The steering in this is heavier and it feels a little bit more secure. Okay, so this is the last straight road that I wanted to go on to. And then we will put myself in my mindset of driving slow. Let's see, any kick down at all? I'm full throttle. 50. 60, 70, 75, that's the most I will do. Yeah, this thing does not move. <laughs> like, I got spoiled with my V8. The 3.2 feels a little bit faster or, you know, quicker, less slow than this. No, no XC90 is fast, even the V8 isn't fast, but this feels wow, just like slow wow. Normally, I don't think that the power would be that bad. Well, honestly, I'm gonna keep myself in my mindset as someone that owned an XC90. 
This thing is slow. Let's see how it is around the corner. Let's send it. It'll take corners quickly and it feels okay. It of course isn't gonna feel like a sports SUV, but it takes corners respectably well. I'm actually surprised with that, but I shouldn't be because Volvos hold the road pretty well. There's a CRV going very slow in front of me. So I guess that puts me in the mindset automatically to drive like a parental figure. When you're driving normally, the engine is pretty quiet and it's responsive. I mean, it is an old car, but you know, for being this, it's responsive for what it is. And driving normally, the mid-range power is where it really gets it. Like I'd say anything above 3000 RPM is where it feels solid and it doesn't feel like it's, I don't know, straining. The engine does sound good. That is something, but it is not a confidence inspiring SUV, but hmm. I still don't exactly know how I feel. I, well, now that I've driven this, I would not buy a 2.5T. I would just, like, if I was to buy an XC90 again, which I don't think I will, I would get the V8. I'd get the V8. But for what it is, it's not bad. The last thing I wanted to mention, and I think this will be in every old Volvo review, if you are wondering what the yellow button on your key fob does, it turns on the parking lights. And speaking about the lights, like other Volvos, if you leave your Volvo at night and you want the lights to stay on, you pull the high beam switch towards you while the car is off and that activates home safe mode. But I'll be honest with you, the door didn't close. I'll be honest with you, I own the V8 XC90 and then now driving this. I'm not going to talk down on this because it's a good motor. I prefer this over the 3.2 because the 3.2 really just screams and it sounds like it's just asthmatic. It sounds like it's always going to blow up. So I would pick the 2.5T over the 3.2. I would never get the T6. But I still want to drive a T6 XC90 to see how it is. I'm glad that I was able to show you this XC90 before we sent it off to the auction. And maybe you may end up with this XC90 in the future. The world may never know. But thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And subscribe for many more videos just like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.